Jared. Of course I met Jared. Okay, but who is Jared? No, seriously, there's a reason behind me asking this question. You see, there's one universe that combines literally every Wilbur Soot song, one that's an absolute roller coaster of emotions, which I know makes me sound crazy at first, but this video is absolutely insane, especially since these songs are comedy songs. So consider subscribing since I make stuff like this all the time. There's even more questions that the Wilbur comedy song universe raises, though. Like, for example, in this line. Your How did the singer of this song, who we know to be at least an extremely creepy stalker type fan, somehow get on a telephone call with this streamer who he knows parasocially in Your New Boyfriend? There is absolutely no way that a random viewer just calls a streamer that big. They don't have their number, they don't know them in real life, especially not regularly enough for it to be their favourite place when they telephone call them. No, there is something more fishy and much more deep going on here. Read this for the patients, and you see there are multiple lines from different songs that link together to form a fairly cohesive narrative, and central to this narrative is one of our main two characters, who I'm going to call William, to differentiate from Wilbur, who is the character that Wilbur portrayed in these videos. The character is quite hard to actually figure out the backstory of, so hard, in fact, that the stupidity that is this scene from Your New Boyfriend is a crucial piece of evidence to his backstory. Sometimes I wonder why I analyze these things. Anyway, with this in mind, I went through the Incel trilogy consisting of these three songs because surely there was evidence of this mysterious Jared and his true personality in there somewhere, right? And sure enough, there was. To fully get this though, we need to go through William's backstory. The first two songs we see from William are I Am Very Smart and then later The Nice Guy Ballad, in which we learn that William was born basically a child prodigy into a rich family, acing all of his tests with next to no work or studying, but this leads to his work ethic, which is usually developed by these tests, being absolutely terrible and causing him to start to struggle more as he grows up. It's around this time that William starts using social media more and more, as we can see later, and he meets another very important part of his storyline, the e-girl, who we're going to be calling Pandora. Now, the reason for this name is because of this edit in the Your New Boyfriend music video, from which we can see that Pandora Braithwaite is their full name, and they respond to William while describing Jared as, quote, pretty fine. We'll talk more about Pandora later, but this is where this line comes from, and remember this, because it becomes really important later. Life isn't quite what I thought I'd be when I was a kid on VOIP. So, we know that William is on social media around this time, but the real descent into the disturbing story of this character begins with the Nice Guy ballad, in which we see that William, who was previously rejected by his classmates, during I Am Very Smart because of his egotistical nature, has very severe and dramatic emotional ups and downs, with very little restraint on how he takes it out on those around him, which leads to him getting rejected by the girl he likes, Sarah, multiple times. So, quick recap in case you couldn't keep up. We have William, who was extremely smart and born into a rich family, but who has very low work ethic, as well as being a general dickhead to nearly everyone around him, leading to him getting rejected by almost everyone in his real life. We also have Pandora, who is the e-girl of this saga, who has only interacted with William a little bit on VOIP, the instant messaging service of days of old. The last song of the incel trilogy, however, is where this theory gets blown wide open. You see, throughout the series, and this is a recurring theme, William is always pretty wealthy, first from his father, then from his job and additional to the family's support, and he has the money to splurge on Twitch donations without a second thought. That is when we hear this line from Karen Please. Can you blame me? I'm quite poor. This line tells us one thing, one thing alone. This isn't William. No, this is someone else. Someone else who's linked to the story, who has a disturbing and genuinely the most creepy backstory of this entire saga. Who's this, you ask? Well, dear viewer, here's a secret. This is Jared. If you enjoyed the video so far, please consider subscribing and let me explain. There's an entire storyline for this and it's incredibly interesting, you're not going to want to miss it. Jared is approximately 10 years older than William and the first we find out about him is from the song Karen Please, in which you learn that he's, well, nothing short of a psychopath. He was married to someone named Karen and then the couple then split for reasons unknown, though I'm willing to wager that it was because Karen saw Jared's real psychopathic nature. This leads to Jared spiralling further and further downwards in the mental health sphere, trying to get Karen's attention and affection back. Then, in trying to relate to his kids more, and specifically his son, he starts watching Twitch streamers so he can understand what they enjoy in hopes of them being able to relate to him through these mediums. This doesn't work, but Jared keeps watching Twitch these spirals further, eventually culminating in Jared murdering Karen's father in cold blood to try and get her attention. This, of course, leads to the exact opposite of what Jared is trying to get to happen, which is Karen completely cutting all ties with them and moving away from Jared with their kids, leading to Jared creating the song Karen Please in the canonical universe as a last resort to try and get Karen's attention again. But 
This isn't where it ends. Now, let's go back to William. The last we saw of him, he was just entering college and had been shunned by all of his classmates and his love interest Sarah, which is basically everyone in the real world, essentially. This leads to William, who was once used to relying on his once golden and now declining grades and intellectual prowess for stability, looking to the internet for comfort, where once again, he finds our e-girl, Pandora, who makes him feel much more accepted and included than anyone in real life did, only furthering the positive mental association that William has with her. This continues till William's only escape is being online with Pandora, and as a coping mechanism, he starts to become more and more obsessed with her, associating everything positive in his life with her. They discuss their dreams, both of theirs are to be full-time content creators or streamers, as is hinted by this line from Your New Boyfriend. She's living the dream. And as you'd expect, William is 17 at this point. This is around the time when I am in love with an e girl is made, though it's a little hazy when exactly this was made in the timeline, particularly in the summer holidays before college starts. I'm also really mentally stable. I'm gonna kill myself. Despite his previous brilliance, William barely coasts through college, going on extravagant trips and making scenes like the infamous Disney World one referenced in Your New Boyfriend. Now this part is going to be super speculative, even for me, and that's because this is my theory as to what exactly the Disney World thing was. Pandora, William's e-girl remember, was doing an IRL stream from Disney World, which sounds fun, right? And William ends up causing a scene there because he tries to meet Pandora despite his restraining order, which meant that Disney World banned him from the premises. Something no man can do as well as I can. And something that shouldn't be for free. Anyway, after this, the scene I mentioned at the start of the video becomes important. William manages to land a dead end 9 to 5 where he works for the rest of the series, but here's the interesting bit. Although we know that William got through college, I think the job he ended up landing wasn't a dead end job in middle management or something. No, no, no. Look at the props William uses in this video a spray bottle, tissues, a fire hydrant, a stool, nothing like a pen, a paper, no clipboards, nothing that would suggest a normal middle management job. I think William landed a job as a janitor in the office, and since he's used to privilege, since he's used to being quote unquote above other people, this job hurts his ego because he's used to looking down on people with jobs that he sees as lesser. All the while, online, he feels entitled, for one reason or another, to having his feelings reciprocated because he's a nice guy, as we saw from before, because he deserves more a feeling only accentuated by his job in real life and his previous experience with entitlement, and he slowly descends further into mental instability. He manages to talk to Pandora in DMs fairly regularly despite his creepy behaviour, but this obsession slowly grows larger and larger until she has to file a restraining order on him because his stalking escalated to that extent. Now you'll see why you're a no Already done that one. While Jared gets no response from Karen, he gets more and more interested in Twitch, which he had gotten addicted to after starting to watch it to relate to his now estranged kids. Remember, eventually finding a female streamer who we know as Pandora, and as is his nature, starting to manipulate her into a relationship with him, a way for Jared at least, to fill the void that Karen moving away created for him in terms of attention. It's important to remember here that Jared is a literal, or well, as far as Google is concerned, psychopath, having murdered Karen's father in an effort to get attention. Time skip ahead a few years, and finally, Jared managed to manipulate Pandora into a relationship with himself, disguising his sociopathic tendencies and nature with other skills, such as his ability to play the guitar, which we can see him used to a similar effect in Karen Play's video, and his physical appearance, which he considers of paramount importance. Pandora, who now, thanks to being in this relationship, has a social life of some sort, starts streaming less, and this is seen to have affected William dramatically in Your New Boyfriend, as you can see from the line, the one who took you away from me. This, plus the fact that during I'm in love with an e-girl, we learn that Pandora has a restraining order served against William due to his obsessive and stalker-like nature leads to William stalking Jared in an effort to get closer to Pandora. And this is why William mentions her telephone calls being his favourite place only after Jared and Pandora get together. Notice how they aren't mentioned at all as telephone calls in any of the previous songs, instead being the more online and therefore more plausible Discord calls. William is happiest when he's listening in on Pandora through her phone calls with Jared. He's obsessed with Pandora and stalks Jared to get closer to her, and the mere thrill of feeling closer to Pandora by listening in on a private private phone call makes his stalking what people would normally feel at least a tad guilty or bad about William's favourite place. This is also why William dreams of Jared's physique and nature, despite not being, well, gay, <laughs> because he can't stop thinking about the times he gets to listen to Pandora. This is the reason that in the Your New Boyfriend video that William never actually plays the guitar. In I Am Very Smart, we see that although William knows how to play the guitar, he has an extremely diminished work ethic and therefore likely never practiced guitar after he was no longer forced to do so. I mean, that by the time Your New Boyfriend rolls around, he's only miming playing the guitar in a way that you'd need to play the guitar to know how to do without actually producing sounds, that is, having your fingers on the right frets but not strumming properly. And the reason he's doing that is 
because of Jared's ability to play the guitar, and seeing that Jared has impressed Pandora in the past with this skill of his. Now, this point does have some caveats, because we can see William Faking playing the guitar in I'm In Love With An E-Girl as well, but I'd say the reason for this is that by the time E-Girl has come out, William has found out about Jared's ability to play the guitar, and so on, because it's publicly available, but isn't stalking him in person yet. We then time skip ahead to the last song of the series, Internet Ruined Me. By this time, William has realised that he has a problem, that his addiction to Twitch and social media has completely consumed him and destroyed what was, at least at the start of I'm Very Smart, a promising, if not good, life. This is the first song where William is finally singing from the heart, not to a woman of any kind, and this is visible in the harmonies of the song, but he's much more vulnerable in the song, and we can see this from that he's very clearly mentally unstable and blames the internet for his spiral, singing to us that the internet, that social media, ruined him, ruined William forever. Subscribe!